And so to 23. Find the equation of a line, the perpendicular bisector of the line that joins the points. Just put it in, as well having a diagram, put it in roughly. 3, negative 3 is about there, negative 1, 9 is about there. Let's move 3, negative 3 over there instead. 3, negative 3 to negative 1, 9. You want the perpendicular bisector, so it's going to cut it in the middle to bisect to come to two parts, and it's going to be at right angles to it. So it's the perpendicular bisector, and that's going to be line L1. Well, so, what are the two things I need? I need a point on it. I'll just call that N, for instance. So the point N, I could have given them their names as well, didn't they? That was P and that was Q. Right. N is going to be the midpoint, average of the coordinates. Add the two coordinates. I've got a negative 1 and a 3, and I've got a 9 and a negative 3. So N is going to be the point, that comes to 2. 2 over 1 is 1, so 2 over 2 is 1. And that's 6 over 2 is 3. So n's going to be the point 1, 3. So that's the midpoint. Next thing I need <coughs> is the gradient of QP. Because this line's going to be perpendicular to it. So I want to take the difference in the y over the difference in the x coordinates going between them. So negative difference in the y is negative 3, take away 9. Negative 3, take away 9. Difference in the x is 3, take away negative 1. 3, take away negative 1. So that's negative 12, and that becomes 4, so that's negative 3. And again, that's why it's handy to have a diagram. That sort of confirms it. It should be steep downwards, and it is. That means that the gradient of the line L1 is going to be the perpendicular, so it's going to be perpendicular to that, which is the negative of the reciprocal. So that's going to be a third. And then you can launch in with the equation of line 1. So line 1 is going to be y minus b is mx minus a, as usual. It goes through the point n, y minus 3. It's got this gradient, one third. It's going upwards, but shallowly upwards. x minus 1, get rid of those fractions. 3y minus 9 is x minus 1. Just write that as 3y equals x, and then take that across as a plus 9, so it'll be plus 8. Give it a name, because I'll probably need that later. Call that equation 1. Right, there's the first one. Right, for part D, find the equation of a line L2 which is parallel. Now I've just drawn it in. Parallel to PQ. So there's a line parallel passing through the point 1, negative 2. Well, that's just it roughly in there. So it's a parallel line. These two lines are parallel. So that means you've got the same gradient. So straight away, the gradient of L2 is going to be the same as the gradient of PQ, which was negative 3. And the point on it, as we're told, was 1, negative 2. So you can just launch straight into y minus b is mx minus a. y minus the y coordinate, so that's y take away a negative 2, we'll just make that a plus 2, equals the gradient, negative 3, times x minus the x coordinate, which is 1. So that'll be y equals negative 3x plus 3 minus 2, so just plus 1. I'll call that equation 2 to go with this first one. So part C, find the point of intersection. So part C, find the point of intersection of lines L1 and L2. I'll just give it a name. That was called N, so I'll call that M. So how would you find the point M, intersection? Intersection M. Well, substitute the two equations. So I'm going to substitute 2 into 1. That'll be the right order. 2 in 1. Wherever I see y, I write this thing instead. So, equation 1 reads 3y, but I don't want y, I write what that says instead. That's the substitution, 3x plus 1, equals x plus 8. Multiply it out. Negative 9x plus 3 is x plus 8. Sort it, I think I'll bring it over this side and read it that way. So that's 9 comes over, making that a 10x. And that 8 will go over, and there'll be 3 minus 8, making a minus 5. So x is negative 5 upon 10, so unfortunately x is negative a half. It's a fraction, but it's not that bad. If you're looking for a fraction, you couldn't do much better than a half. Find the y-coordinate. Well, substitute that back in. Substitute x equals negative a half, and whichever one's better, that one's better, so in 2. So number 2 is going to read negative 3 times negative a half plus 1. So that's 3 upon 2 plus 1. Make it all over 2. Plus another 2, 5 up in 2. Which means the point of intersection, which I've called M, is negative a half, 5 up in 2. 
For part D, you find the shortest distance between the line PQ and the line L2, the two parallel lines. Well, they stay the same distance apart, so any line, any distance at right angles will do, and there you are. This line L1 must cut through them both at right angles. Since that line's parallel to that line, if it's perpendicular to this line, it's perpendicular to that line. So the distance will be the distance MN. That's what I want. I want the distance MN. So I'll just be that little right angle triangle. Difference in the X coordinates, difference in the Y coordinates. So difference in the X coordinates. 1 take away negative a half, square that. Difference in the Y coordinates. 3 take away 5 upon 2, square that. Those being the two sides of that little right angle triangle. So what's that I've got then? So that's 3 upon 2 squared. I'll just spell it out just now. 3 upon 2 squared. And that's going to be 6. That's just a half. A half squared. So that's going to be 9 upon 4 plus 1 upon 4. So that's the square root of 10 upon 4. Well, the 4 can escape the square root, but that 10 remains trapped. So it is. Shortest distance. I'll just say that. Shortest distance equals that. And there it is. Question 23 done.